Today, I'm going to teach you how to train your cat to generate up to $1,500 in passive income every week. I've been informed that that's not actually what we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about unreliable narrators. I should have narrated that opening a little more accurately. The majority of what I talk about on this channel is about getting information across to the reader. Whether it's exposition or description or character stuff, the ultimate challenge in writing is making sure the reader knows what's going on in the story in a way that's engaging and elicits the appropriate emotional response. Usually this means ensuring that the reader knows exactly how things are playing out and that they are given accurate information about what's going on in the story. Sometimes though, we may want to work a little deception into the mix. Enter the unreliable narrator, which is also called an untrustworthy narrator by some folks. Although I'm not sure if those people can be trusted. Essentially, the unreliable narrator is a viewpoint character who gives the reader an inaccurate or biased account of how the story unfolds. There's all sorts of reasons that a character would want to do this, as we'll see in a moment, but that's the gist of it. While an unreliable narrator is a great way to add some characterization to your story and perhaps set up interesting plot twists, it's also something that needs to be done correctly. So let's talk about some of the considerations you want to make if one of your characters is less than trustworthy. First off, let's dispel a myth about the unreliable narrator. The myth being that only a story written in first-person perspective can have an unreliable narrator. First person arguably fits the best since the character is directly relating the story to the reader, so it makes sense that they could be more direct and perhaps less reliable. There is, however, no reason that a third person limited perspective can't also provide an unreliable narrator. I've mentioned before that one of the ways to characterize in Third Limited is to tailor the description and exposition to the viewpoint character so that the description and exposition matches their biases. Now, Third Limited can get complicated when you have multiple viewpoints, since not every viewpoint is likely to come from an unreliable narrator. But as we'll talk about later on, this can be helpful when it comes to revealing the deception to the reader. The unreliable narrator is very much a character-driven construct. Fundamentally, the character telling the story to the reader has some reason to want the reader deceived, and that's one of the crucial things you need to decide on. The character needs a reason. They need some kind of motivation to be unreliable in the first place. And there's plenty of different ones to choose from, but I'm broadly going to break them down into intentional reasons and unintentional. I'm intentionally reducing this to two categories to save time in the video. Intentional reasons are things like the character might have committed a crime and doesn't want to tell the reader that, or the events of the story are traumatic or embarrassing, or maybe the information is sensitive and it's being hidden for national security reasons. Whatever the underlying cause, the character is making an active, conscious decision to deceive the reader and withhold or alter information. The unintentional reasons are a little more complex. This is when the character doesn't necessarily realize that they are being unreliable. They might be so naive and inexperienced that they radically misinterpret what's going on in the story. They might have been brainwashed, or they might have a mental illness that alters their perception of reality. Or the whole event could have just been a dream, but the character doesn't realize. Intentional reasons for being an unreliable narrator lend themselves to more malicious motives, and I would say in general tend to make the character less likable, since they've deceived the reader for not so nice purposes. Unintentional reasons, especially ones that are sort of tragic, can make the character more sympathetic. The underlying reasons why a character is being unreliable is an important consideration when it comes to the next issue, revealing the deception to the reader. Because after all, if the reader never learns that the narrator is unreliable, then that kind of defeats the purpose. If you're using the unreliable narrator to set up a twist, probably towards the end of the story, then the deception might be revealed all at once. 
maybe evidence gets presented at the character's trial for crimes they assured the reader they weren't guilty for, or maybe the character gives a deathbed confession. Whatever route you go here, it's generally a big reveal and results in a reframing of the events in the story up to this point. That will change how the reader feels about the character and about the story, and that might not be a good thing. It's for this reason that there are usually hints dropped along the way that the narrator isn't being totally forthcoming. This could be simple plot holes in their story or changes to how they remember events. Anything that gives the reader a clue that this person isn't necessarily reliable. In the unintentional situations, uh, especially the ones that deal with something like a mental illness, you'll often have the story's events get more and more outlandish, which can imply that the character is misunderstanding reality. Same thing can happen if the story was actually a dream. This is a place where it's common to see the unreliability of a character exposed through their interactions with other characters. You might have other characters who react oddly to the character's actions, or you might have them asking questions or recounting their own version of events, all of which can clue the reader in that what they're hearing from the narrator isn't necessarily accurate. In third limited stories, you'll often have viewpoints that are more reliable than the deceiving character. These can help clue the reader in as well. I've also seen cases where the third person narrative itself is unbiased and reliable, but the character's thoughts or maybe how they speak through dialogue is done in an unreliable way. One author who comes to mind who does this a lot is Robert Jordan. He often has characters who will think about an event that just happened or say something that is in direct contradiction to what's actually being described in the narrative. That's generally a fairly reliable way to have an unreliable narrator and make sure that the reader knows that it's an unreliable narrator. All of these methods are a fairly reliable way to handle an unreliable narrator. Just like I can't be relied on to write a good transition to the conclusion. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful and hopefully reliable. I'm now regretting the fact that I didn't just give you bad advice throughout this whole video to really drive home the unreliable thing. Anyway, if you want to see more stuff like this, you can check out all my other writing advice related videos and subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every Wednesday and occasionally on Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.